Hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. This is going to be another first impressions video. In this first impressions video, we are going to be talking about the Tyon Inc. Grenadier 45 suppressor. And before we get this video started, I want to let you guys know the best way that you can support my channel right now is by checking out the link in the description to the Firearm Freedom merchandise store. I got a lot of awesome shirts on there that I know you guys love, and I seriously appreciate you repping the brand that is Firearm Freedom. If you want to make sure that the censorship train does not continue here on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, comment down below. That stuff should help the algorithms make sure that these videos do not stay hidden from your subscription feed. The Tyon Inc. Grenadier. I'm actually pretty excited about this first impressions video because I believe it is the first video out on the YouTube sphere in regards to an actual review or an overview of this particular suppressor. Tyon Inc. has been making suppressors for a very long time, and they are just now really starting to gain traction as far as across the country and not just here in the state of Pennsylvania and surrounding states, which Tyon Inc. is actually based in. You can see right there on the suppressor itself that they are in Glen Rock, PA. Now we have to get out of the way the full disclosure with Tyon. You guys may remember maybe a few months ago that Tyon Inc. was a sponsor here on Firearm Freedom. That means that they actually have advertisement reels here on the channel and there's contracts and other things. I will never do a paid review on this channel. That's just not how I work. My reviews do not get a, a secondary review ahead of time by, by anyone to just make sure they're looking good before I get posted. You guys know integrity is number one on my channel. So I actually got these in for the sponsorship just to do some B-roll uh, for the ad reels and things like that. And I was legitimately very impressed with the suppressors and I actually requested to hang on to the Grenadier 45 and also the Dragoon 762 QD to do further evaluation and reviews. So at this point in time, there is no current money exchange back and forth with me and Tyon. I said, hey, if you're willing to let me take a look at this can and give it my full review process, that would be great. But it is going to be completely organic and unbiased and that's just how I roll. This is a full titanium suppressor. And when you are looking at full titanium, you have kind of some cool things. And I will be totally honest with you guys, before I started to take a look at these suppressors, I was not a huge fan of titanium cans. And the primary reason was because I heard titanium, and for whatever reason, maybe because of other suppressors on the market, I thought the durability was less. I thought, you know, it was comparable to a very light suppressor, but, you know, you don't have any full auto capability. You don't have the ability to run the can hard. It's kind of a bolt gun can. So my hopes were not high when I first started to get the suppressor. And I did see on Tyon's website that most of their suppressors have a full auto rating and also a limited full auto rating, depending on the caliber, depending on the barrel length, etc. And I really wanted to put that to the test. So especially for their 762 QD that you guys will be seeing in a future video, I did run that full auto on a machine gun on a, about a 10 inch machine gun and it did great so I, I will say that I have truly tested their full auto rating and it has done great this Grenadier 45 I have put on my SP5 that's primarily what I am running this can on with the tri-lug adapter there in the back and it is 
ran great. I was mag dumping and mag dumping in that SP5 to really just see what the deal was. Can this titanium suppressor hold up to the abuse? And it absolutely did. It did not even really show any signs of the Cerakote boiling off, which is awesome. I'm going to be throwing in some B-roll of shots of the actual baffle stack before I got this can all sorts of dirty so you can see exactly what's going on here. But Tyon actually has a very unique patented baffle design that can be keyed. You have a total of four different settings on each baffle that allow you to key up the holes through the bottom of the baffle for more or less gas flow through the suppressor. This will actually change the effects that the can has in the way of sound and back pressure depending on whether or not you are shooting it on a rifle or a pistol. Now I was told by the folks over at Tyon that realistically Realistically, the most benefit in keying those baffles is going to be on something like a pistol caliber carbine or a rifle and not as much a handgun, but you still have the ability to play around with those baffles. They are, of course, obviously, as you can tell by me saying that, user serviceable suppressors. So that's kind of the cool thing about these cans, even their rifle suppressors are also user serviceable. So I really dig that because I can also run 22 long rifle through this if I wanted to. Now, generally for me, I specifically keep my 22 long rifle through rimfire cans because I just hate cleaning it through the pistol cans and, and other things like that. But the option is here. When you're looking at a suppressor being made, you can see the difference of, of a suppressor that understands the, the user market in the way of, hey, everyone doesn't want to buy specialty wrenches that are not going to fit anything else. And it's, it's just nice to see. So it will look very familiar to you here if you are at all mechanically inclined. And this star pattern back here is the setup for a socket on a standard socket wrench. So for the Trilug mount, which would be bought separately on Tyon's website, you have a 27 millimeter socket here and you can see that it fits right on. This got me very excited about the suppressors. It seems very small, but when it comes to needing to take apart a can, there's nothing more frustrating than trying to get it apart. Everything's seized up and you can't get a hold of anything on there because you have these weird little wrenches or small like knurled caps to get everything off. Stuff is slipping off the small ports that it has. It's almost like a lot of companies care a lot more about the look of a tool rather than the functionality and the way it goes for taking apart the can. So that was something that I thought was really ingenious by Tyon and I dig that quite a bit. It's made maintenance on the suppressor very very easy and it's a tool that most people would have laying around and it's about 20 bucks to get now my note to tie on when it comes to the disassembly process and the tools i would love to have in the box with the price of the suppressor some sort of a small like option that is like a socket in the way of just fitting on those pieces maybe not as ideal but just kind of like a free option in there to come along with the can so that way if somebody doesn't have the ability to run out and grab this real quick or they don't have it on hand there's something to get the job done i think it's cool to have that option in the box but to also say hey if you don't want to use our little custom wrench there you can just use any standard socket and that's going to work just fine but having it come along with that may be a nice option in the future a lot of folks are going to ask about price point with the can when it comes to the grenadier 45 in the black cerakote which is exactly what i have here you're looking at an msrp of 1290 dollars now I first looked at this can, and I, I won't lie to you guys, I'm used to buying steel suppressors. So that was like kind of my first go at not, I, I wasn't as pumped about it because I saw the MSRP and I'm just like, man, you know, all, all my cans are, are, you know, a couple hundred dollars cheaper than that on MSRP. I, I just don't know that it's going to be worth $1,290. And I didn't really look at other titanium cans. Now, as the, the process went on of messing with the tie-on cans, I went ahead and looked at other competing t titanium suppressors out there on the market. And, you know, the price when it comes to this tie-on can is actually less than a lot of other titanium cans on the market. I had absolutely no idea uh, the, the price of titanium cans. So if you're looking at it compared to steel, 
you're going to have the same mindset that I had, which is, man, that is crazy, crazy expensive. However, if you kind of look at it to all the titanium cans out there, it's actually on the lower end of titanium suppressors. So that's just something to keep in mind. The price is also going to be a little bit higher for accessories, and that's just something to consider. Now, Tyon really kind of wanted to go above and beyond for the manufacturing of this suppressor. You guys will be seeing in the B-roll, I'm not gonna take this can apart right now because it is filthy. We have probably getting close to about a thousand rounds through it for this first impressions video, and I won't be able to properly show you just the fit and finish of the baffles themselves. But you will see in the B-roll of those baffles in the beginning before I shot the can and just the machining and the fit and finish on the pistons, on the tri-lug, on the baffle stack themselves is truly immaculate. I have my gunsmith and bearded friend that occasionally makes his way in the B-roll of my range day footage, and he is very in tune with just machine quality and just understanding that, and he was incredibly impressed by just the, the quality of the individual parts. And it's something that you really can't get from a video. I truly was, being completely honest, impressed with the fit and finish of the parts. Sound quality of the can. How does this can sound compared to other suppressors that I have? It sounds very good. Now, you guys will have seen in the very beginning of this video, what I do in the beginning of every suppressor video is put unedited sound of the suppressor itself. So you're gonna hear unsuppressed and suppressed from multiple different guns, and you guys can be the judge with how it sounds to you. One of the immediately compared options that I had in my personal co collection was a Dead Air Ghost 45 suppressor. It's about the same length, it's about the same overall dimensions and volume that the Grenadier 45 is, and I will say, compared to that can, the Grenadier 45 was much more quiet. And depending on the ammunition choice that I was putting through my HK SP5 with the Grenadier suppressor, it sounded incredibly quiet. It was most definitely hearing safe. I did not feel any pressure to put ears on. I did put some 124 grain hot NATO ammo through the can on the SP5, and that was the only time where it was borderline, where I kind of wanted to put ears on. But remember guys, that is not subsonic ammunition at all that I was putting through a full-size PCC. So this is something that generally speaking with the Dead Air Ghost, I have to wear hearing protection for and I almost never take my ears off so I was very impressed shooting this with standard supersonic ammo through my HK VP9 it also did great there no problems was able to not wear ears and was very comfortable most of the time I also shot it through my Kimber TLE RL2 and that's 45 ACP and again that did great no problem as far as pistons I have the half by 28 piston and I also have the 0.578 by 28 piston for 45 ACP. So they do have a wide variety of thread pitch options for their pistons and the lockup is phenomenal. I will say again, as I mentioned, the price point on those is a little bit saltier. You're looking about 120 bucks per piston. And when you're comparing it to other options on the market, it is higher. But again, compare it to titanium options and it's not too terribly bad. It's also nice that Tyon makes a pretty low pro option for tri-lug. When it comes to a PCC, tri-lug is absolutely the way. There is, there is no doubt about it. And as far as how the tri-lug works, you guys will see in B-roll that I actually am able to use the spring from the Nielsen device and put it in the tri-lug adapter. So you can just swap that spring back and forth. The only thing I ran into, which you have to be careful of, there's a small titanium bushing on the tri-lug device that is designed to hold the spring into place. When everything gets heated up at the range and you're taking it on and off, it is easy to lose that. I actually did lose that piece, so that's something to keep in mind when you're running it tri-lug and you're taking it apart at the range, because the Nielsen device and the 
Trilug device is not a captive piece. It can come apart so you can take the spring back and forth. That's just something you want to be aware of so you don't actually lose that piece because you won't be able to use the Trilug without getting that piece. So you would need to get a replacement piece at that point. You guys can go on their website and you can see all their decibel ratings. The suppressor is rated up to 458 SOCOM with subsonic. It can also do subsonic 300 blackout and it is full auto rated for 45 ACP and 9 millimeter. And I would say that that full auto rating is absolutely accurate. I had no issues with this no finish cooking off. And the thing about titanium is it gets hot very, very quickly. And that's the issue with certain titanium cans. What was very interesting is it also gets cool very quickly. So whereas my steel cans would be lit up at this point and taking forever to cool down. This got hot quick, but then in a matter of like, to no exaggeration, three or four minutes, it was cool to the touch. It was, it was no problem. That's after like four mag dumps, which is very impressive. And so I do not think that the full auto rating would be an issue at all. Now, when it comes to the decibel metering, that's all on their website too. I don't recite that here in these videos because I just go off of how it sounds to me. And the tone of the suppressor sounds very good. And overall, I, I was impressed with the can. You guys are seeing here now that this is a pretty positive review. And say what you will, I know a lot of people are gonna say, hey, that's just a positive review because you had a sponsor by them. But for those diehard subscribers of the channel, you guys know that's not me and that's something that I will never do. I requested to keep this suppressor because I like it so much. So that's why the review is positive. That is going to wrap up this first impressions video on the Tyon Inc. Grenadier 45 suppressor. If you guys have any other questions about this can or anything else on my channel, please feel free to comment down below and you guys know I absolutely will get back to you. While you're down there, check out the description for all the links to support the channel. And as always, stay tuned for more great videos coming soon.